three odd percent. Let's in fact now cut across to Parikshit Luthra, who's in a conversation with Rajiv Bajaj. Yes, Bajaj Auto stock has been in focus with Bank of America upgrading the stock to a buy rating. The bank in a note has said that it sees FY24 as a year of stabilization for the company and FY25 to see high teen volume growth in exports. The reason for revision in rating is because exports seem to be inflecting with market drags now behind and electric vehicle production ramp up taking place with supply chain issues sorted out. In August, two-wheeler sales for Bajaj Auto came in at uh, 2 lakh 85,000 with domestic sales down 31%, exports up 2%. This was a marginal improvement in uh, exports after almost 13 months of a slowdown. In Q1, revenue from operations was a record 10,310 crores, up 29% year on year, and highest quarterly, quarterly EBITDA of rupees uh, 1,954 crores, a growth of 50 one percent year on year in july the company launched two new premium bikes in collaboration with triumph the street 400 and scrambler 400x how are the triumph bikes adding to bajaj auto's sales volumes what next on the company's premiumization journey and what is the ev and alternate fuel roadmap really looking at also how is the company gearing up for competition from ola tvs and ether in electric vehicles joining us to talk about this all is rajiv bajaj md of bajaj auto uh, rajiv i'd like to begin by asking you how do sales in domestic market look currently what about the festive season domestic sales have also been under stress because of the entry level segment hi parikshit good afternoon uh, by domestic i suppose you mean motorcycle so let me give you a brief commentary on that. The entry segment, um, uh, you know, which is the 100cc motorcycle, uh, this continues to be under pressure for the industry as a whole. Uh, for Bajaj, as you know, this is not uh, a, a major area of focus. Uh, so in that sense, it's not a priority for us. Uh, the mid-market, uh, which we define as kind of uh, 125 to 200cc, typically a ex showroom price of 80,000 to about 1.7 lakhs of rupees. Um, this is what is growing very strongly uh, in recent times. Uh, and this is where you know our focus has been, particularly with our brand Pulsar. Uh, I would say we have done rather well here with our product and marketing initiatives. Our market share has climbed uh, steadily over the months uh, to now uh, you know around the 30% mark. Um, we are the uh, number two player, very close to the number one um, in this mid-segment. And uh, as you can imagine, uh, this has been positive not just for our growth, but also for our uh, EBITDA. You know? So that's one of the reasons why you could reel off some of those numbers uh, on EBITDA, etc. Uh, so this will continue to be um, a very strong area of focus in the uh, near term. Uh, and finally, there is the premium segment. Um, uh, we classify that as being motorcycles above 1.7 lakhs of rupees. Uh, that is witnessing positive growth. Uh, uh, so that's not negative like the entry segment, but uh, uh, not as big or as strong as the mid segment. And whereas, you know, we, we have some brands like uh, the Pulsar RS, the Dominar, KTM, Husqvarna, and now Triumph, and uh, I would say we are doing very well there, especially with the introduction of the Triumphs. Right. Uh, in terms of entry-level buyers, do you think uh, the market will start looking up with this festive season and beyond? Uh, you know, it's impossible to forecast. Uh, but there are so many uh, comments on this, uh, you know, on, on both sides, uh, for and against. But my own sense is that beyond uh, looking at it quantitatively, one needs to look at this segment um, qualitatively. Uh, you know, this is the segment of people at the bottom of the pyramid that have undoubtedly faced the biggest impact um, uh, of COVID and the consequent actions associated with COVID. Um, and both in terms of real job losses uh, and in terms of sentiment uh, driven primarily, I would say, by petrol prices, you know, this uh, consumer is not coming back like the mid-segment consumer is or the car consumer is. At the same time, we must also acknowledge that probably this is the consumer that is looking at EVs. You know, so every time somebody buys an electric scooter and there are almost 60, 70,000 of them being sold in terms of the high-speed vehicles and perhaps many more in terms of the low-speed vehicles, uh, you know, those are not coming 
coming only at the expense of the ice uh, scooters. That is also coming, I'm sure, at the expense of the uh, ice motorcycle. So personally, I really don't think uh, this consumer is going to come back uh, in the near future, certainly not in this festive season, to where it was pre-COVID. And I think that if um, you know we have to make headway here, we need to do more than just hope for the consumer to rebound. We need some disruptive action in this space. Right. Uh, so that's important. You don't see the entry-level consumer returning, at least in this festive no. season. Uh, but you had promised something uh, special this year for Pulsar fans. In our last interview, you had said that uh, Bajaj Auto will be paying homage to the Pulsar. Uh, could you give us a sense of what to expect and when? Sure. I would first uh, like to start by saying that uh, since we spoke in the last uh, the two, three months, uh, we have uh, the new uh, NS160 and NS200 there. Uh, we also have, uh, uh, you know, uh, in fact, this month we launched uh, a new uh, Pulsar, the N150, uh, which we are very hopeful of. Uh, that it will bring us uh, some great results in this festive season. We've got the timing right. We think we have the product and the price right. And um, between now and the end of the financial year, over the next six months, uh, we would uh, introduce six uh, significant upgrades uh, or new pulses, all aimed, quite frankly, at uh, further enhancing our share in this mid-segment mm -hmm. from 30% to, you know, uh, uh, as much as it can rise. Mm -hmm. uh, we would certainly like to uh, vie for the number one spot in this, uh, in this position. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can say that in terms of the uh, question you asked, the direct answer would be this, that uh, uh, for all the Pulsar fans out there, uh, we have um, plans to launch the biggest Pulsar ever. So the, currently the biggest Pulsar is a 250cc, the N250 and F250. Uh, but we want to launch uh, in this financial year the biggest Pulsar ever. Uh, we think we have a fantastic product uh, to offer them. And we want to do it within this financial year so that, uh, you know, the full benefit of that in terms of uh, growth and profitability is available to us next year. Right. So significantly, you said six new upgrades to the Pulsar and uh, one motorcycle will be the biggest ever platform that Pulsar has ever had. Uh, is that right, Mr. Bajaj? That, that is correct. So it's a total of seven, six plus the big one. All right. Six uh, upgraded motorcycles and one big one. Could you give us a sense of the kind of engine capacity you'd like to play with there? No, it's a little early for that. Okay. Maybe the next time we speak. All right. Uh, also, what next on the premiumization journey? Well, Parikshit, premiumization um, is now a way of uh, uh, life for all of us. Uh, in the 125cc, for example, the reason we've had so much success is because with uh, the uh, various pulses we've offered, uh, you know, consumers have uh, responded um, very favorably to quickly put us in a number two position with our 125cc volumes being around 60,000 a month. Uh, similarly, you know, we just spoke about the 150 to 200 space where again the pulses are doing a great job for us in the marketplace. Um, but the most <laughs> important action for us, uh, you know, and we talked about this the last time we met in July, is going to be premiumization in the premium space. Uh, which, as I <clears throat> referred to earlier, is the 1.7 lakhs plus uh, segment, uh, where, <clears throat> excuse me, so far we've been uh, clocking volumes of about uh, 8,000 a month between the, sorry, Parikshit, between the uh, Pulsar, Dominar, KTM, and Husqvarna's, um, and uh, we have about 8% um, market share. So over there, with these uh, two major interventions, you know, on the Pulsar with the big one, which will obviously be priced uh, in that segment, and with the Triumphs, not only with the Triumph Speed 400, which we are currently making and selling, but as you know, from October, we have the new Scrambler 400, um, and then uh, the exports of Triumph will also kick in uh, from October. So all this put together, uh, we are reading capacity for doubling our domestic volume from the present 8,000 a month to somewhere between 15 and 20,000 a month so that we can be a strong number two player in this segment um, uh, in the domestic market. Of course, Enfield with about 70% share currently uh, is the number one. Um, and 
in terms of exports, we think we will be by far the number one player because currently our exports between the Bajaj brands and the KTM brands is about 10,000 a month. And with the new Pulsar and the new Triumphs, um, we think we will again take exports to 15, 20,000 a month. So all put together in the premium segment, domestic plus exports, we are looking at about 35,000 motorcycles a month, a rate we would like to achieve by the end of this financial year. All right. Uh, in terms of the number of bookings received for Triumph, how many have you received as yet and how many delivered so far? Okay. So, uh, as you know, for the first 10,000 bookings, um, we had a special price of 2.23 lakhs. Uh, at some point of time, perhaps uh, four or six weeks ago, uh, bookings exceeded 20,000 units. I frankly don't know where they stand today, uh, but I do know we have switched to the new price. Um, and in terms of uh, production and deliveries in July, uh, I think we build about uh, 500 vehicles in, um, uh, or, or maybe a, a few more. In uh, August, it was a little more than 3,000. So I would say between July and August, uh, it would be about 4,000. I would imagine about half of that has been delivered to customers. The rest is either, you know, just undergoing final checks at dealerships or on their way uh, in trucks to dealerships. In terms of this month, uh, we are targeting to uh, achieve something like four and a half thousand. Quite frankly, we are limited by uh, capacity right now, or I should say by production actually uh, of certain parts. Uh, and in the near term, our goal is that in the month of January, uh, as I said, on the back of these uh, uh, three elements, the current Speed 400, the new Scrambler and exports, we should be around the 10,000 mark. Uh, and, you know, that's that's a very nice place to be in this segment. It's very profitable and particularly exports mm. at 3,000 uh, a month and with the rupee at 83 mm. uh, is not a bad thing at all. Right. Uh, I would like to ask you about your electric vehicle strategy now. TVS has launched a premium scooter at 2.49 lakhs. Ether has launched a scooter at 1.3. Ola has launched the S1 Air at 1.10,000. Uh, uh, what do you think about these uh, pricing strategies now? Well, uh, clearly the TVS price by their own admission uh, is a price that makes the product very niche, um, uh, especially in the domestic market. But of course, it's a great demonstration of their uh, capability and their commitment. Um, uh, but I heard them to say that, uh, you know, their volume expectations are uh, uh, quite muted with this in the domestic market. I don't remember the number. Um, as far as the Ola and Ather prices are concerned, and our price is actually uh, very similar to the Ather price, I think that is where, you know, the, uh, the market is, that is where the TBS iCube is. Um, and uh, my sense is that uh, this is a price which... Uh, uh, we will have to uh, make a big effort to make uh, sustainable. At least I can say that for Bajaj, it is still not a price which is very profitable. Um, and when fame goes away next year, uh, we are all going to struggle to, to hold this price. Um, but this is the price at which uh, consumers are uh, you know, willing to look at the uh, i-scooter. Uh, as a uh, sorry, the EV scooter as an alternative to uh, i-scooters and motorcycles at a much higher price than this. Um, the interest fades away and, uh, uh, you know, that is uh, evident from the fact that even currently, you know, all said and done, uh, the penetration is in low single digits. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know about cars. I think it is like 2% or something. And even for two wheelers, mm -hmm. I don't think it is uh, much more than 4-5%. Right. Uh, also to ask you about the Chetak. There have been supply chain issues with the Chetak scooter. Approximately 7,000 units of Chetak were produced in August. How much would you like it? Like to take it to? What about exports of Chetaks? And uh, are there new Chetak scooters uh, in the pipeline? Okay. So, yeah. So, there's a kind of small picture answer and a big picture answer. The small picture answer is that, yes, we did. I think uh, we dispatched 8,000 vehicles after producing 7,000 in August. Uh, hopefully this month we can do better than that. Uh, if we can do 10,000, that would be nice to build up towards the festive season. Uh, and certainly our own plan is uh, to uh, exit this financial year at something closer to 15 to 20,000. So we are putting capacity in place for that, not just at our end, but throughout the supply chain. Um, and uh, we do have something on the product front also uh, after the festive season uh, to stimulate further demand. Uh, 
you know, uh, towards that goal of 15, 20,000. So that would be the answer, uh, the small picture answer. In terms of the big picture, I think the way we are looking at it now and um, uh, kind of carving out our plans for the future is this, that uh, we are no longer just comparing Chetak volumes with those of its very obvious and immediate uh, competitors. You know, we have to uh, look at the entire uh, market of scooters, which is, say, about 500,000 a month, uh, and also the entry-level motorcycles, like we talked about the 100cc motorcycle, which is also close to uh, that number. So we are talking about, you know, 1 million um, uh, people out there every month um, who uh, should be looking at uh, EVs uh, for all that uh, EVs have to offer. Uh, and uh, this is not even counting uh, the uh, people who are buying uh, today the uh, low-speed vehicles uh, that ply at uh, under 25 kilometers an hour. So as a uh, OEM that wants to be relevant uh, to the EV future, um, you know, one would target typically, uh, if not 20 percent, at least 10 percent, uh, you know, as a minimum critical mass to be a kind of competitive and in the reckoning mm. uh, in this segment. So this means that uh, we now need to think not of 10,000 a month and 20,000 a month, but uh, between Chetak and our partner company, Yulu, we need to think about a 100,000 a month. Mm. Uh, and this is what is on our mind right now. So that's the big picture answer. Okay. By when do you want to take that capacity to 100,000 a month? And the reason why I ask is because you are facing stiff competition from Ola and TVS, both their sales are in the range of 15 to 18,000 currently. Uh, by when do you think you can reach this mark, cross it, and also speak about uh, the 100,000 electric vehicle capacity mark that you're talking about? Well, uh, so let me answer that in two parts. Uh, as far as uh, our own sales vis-a-vis -vis competition is concerned, uh, of course, Aether and TVS have done a fabulous job. There's no taking away from that. Uh, Chetak, unfortunately, was always a little higher priced. Uh, it was the most expensive of, uh, you know, the, the, the four in the marketplace. Um, we have been able to get the cost structure right um, uh, of late, and that is why you see the surge in our volumes. Also, um, we have chosen the route of not putting the Chetak into our existing Bajaj motorcycle dealerships, uh, but rather into... Uh, Chetak dealerships, you know, um, and um, wherever that was not immediately possible, we have gone through the higher end KTM dealerships, uh, wherever it made sense. It's not like in all 500 KTM dealerships, you can find uh, a Chetak. So distribution um, has also been uh, a little slow, but now obviously uh, with this um, interest in Chetak after the uh, price has been corrected, um, uh, distribution is really being ramped up um, uh, very significantly uh, in these months. So, uh, so I have no doubt that uh, you know uh, between what we've done on price and distribution, uh, Chetak will continue to grow uh, every month. Hmm. As far as the question on 100,000 is concerned, this is something that as a team, uh, we have to get our minds around. We obviously need uh, uh, first and foremost product solutions for that. You know, it can't just be a pipe dream. Our current capacity is about uh, 40,000 a month mm. between the Chetak and Yulu. Um, and I would like to believe that for the next financial year, that is FY25 budget, when we present this to the board in March, uh, we should have a plan in place to take the capacity to somewhere uh, well above 40 and towards 100,000 a month. All right, so you have given us a roadmap there. Uh, I'd like to ask you about your electric three-wheeler plans also. There was an electric three-wheeler launch slotted this year. Uh, is it on the cards? When is it expected? And will it be open for exports immediately? Uh, exports immediately, uh, no. Maybe very selectively where there are specific opportunities, uh, such as perhaps in Sri Lanka, for example. Uh, but basically, the focus is the domestic market, and we already introduced our product, starting with uh, the city of Agra um, in the month of May. Um, and I'm very happy to say that, you know, we, I think we did the right thing by waiting to get the product absolutely right, especially in terms of range, because that is so important, obviously, uh, to a three-wheeler operator. And I believe in Two or three months uh, after launch, uh, we are a market leader in that market with uh, something like sales of three to four hundred e-autos uh, every month and a market share, I believe, in excess of 50 percent. Uh, the, the last I heard of that. 
since then we have expanded to some other cities and we are uh, you know obviously going to uh, roll this out first in cities that are ice restricted so we are not like going pan india right now currently uh, if you look at what we did last month it's closer to 1500 uh, e3 wheelers between the e auto and the e cargo vehicle um, and i am told by rakesh and i believe he shared this on cnbc the last time he was there perhaps he did that uh, our near term goal by which i mean again within this financial year is to clearly be the market leader in this as we are overwhelmingly with uh, ice vehicles uh, you know uh, i cannot but mention that in the month of august um, the team has done a great job of uh, selling 50000 three wheelers in the domestic market obviously most of them ice barring these 1500 uh, and we are hoping to uh, match if not exceed that this month which is again uh, excellent for our financial performance and um, coming back to the e three wheeler this would mean that uh, towards the end of this financial year we have to get closer to you know 3 and a half 4 thousand vehicles a month and then plan again for the next year to take it to the next level all right uh, speaking about exports two wheeler exports have been under stress for the past many months for bajaj auto do you see them finally turning uh, a corner now they they have turned around parikshit especially uh, the motorcycles um, and the three wheelers are beginning to as well as you know typically uh bajaj auto exported about 200000 vehicles a month uh, before you know export markets have run into the problems that they have we fell to a low of around uh, 110000 maybe for a couple of months since then you you have seen that in this quarter we have come up to about 140 145000 um and again as rakesh had, had indicated uh, 150000 plus was on the horizon um sitting here today i would like to believe that is a number that we can um, achieve in october but i have to say that with the uncertainty still persisting in terms of forex availability one can never be sure but we are very very hopeful uh, that in the next quarter we will do better than what we have done in this in this quarter which i believe is somewhere around 140000 a month so it has very much turned around uh, and slowly and steadily we are gaining ground again over there of course we never really lost market share so that's not a concern but volumes are building up but in the meantime the rupee at 83 is uh, certainly giving us comfort all right uh, on a lighter note uh, while you're working on uh, your business with multiple pillars of which evs and alternate fuels are a part there are some who are talking about ending ice age in fact referring to your two year old comment that champions eat uh, oats for breakfast bhavi shagarwal recently replied and said that he puts ice cubes in his drinks how would you respond to that well parikshit you would remember when we met for the triumph launch i was asked a similar question that on 5th of july i said even then you know that uh, it is the consumer who gives us the license to make something or takes away the license you know it is not rajiv bajaj or bhavi shagarwal uh, or anyone else in industry or government uh, so this is uh, what i firmly believe uh, as for oats uh, Uh, you know uh, it's funny it's something i said 2 years back and uh, it uh, it's still hanging in the air um, and uh, uh, you know i i must say this i have met bhavish once i i like his energy very much um, uh, so so i have positive feelings uh, uh, for him but i would say this you know that sometimes uh, uh, if you don't sound too good maybe you have a bad throat from taking on too much ice so be careful how much ice you take on at one time <laughs> All right, uh, and my final question would be about uh, alternate fuel vehicles, uh, Mr. Bajaj. Uh, you know, Minister Nitin Gadkari, in a way, nudged the industry and rather strongly at the automotive convention, the Siam Convention, to phase out diesel. He warned that uh, the government could impose higher taxes, and then he said that there is no plan as such, but it was just a nudge in that direction uh, towards moving towards alternate fuels. How is Bajaj Auto embracing alternate fuels? Uh, you had been working on a portfolio there were prototypes being worked upon is there something ready that you could unveil in the near future so okay so i was not there uh, at the convention so uh, uh, but i did read about this uh, he spoke about diesel as i understand and diesel as you know is not a big part of bajaj auto we don't make any diesel two wheelers uh, and in our three wheeler portfolio say the 50000 vehicles that i referred to that we made in august um, i would think uh, fewer than 10% would be diesel um, 
I would like to say that uh, what Mr. Gadkari said has sparked a very interesting thought in our minds uh, because he talked about clean fuels. He referred to CNG, he referred to LNG. Uh, and uh, uh, I would, well, I would present this data to you that today 70% of the three wheelers that we make uh, for the domestic market uh, are CNG. And this was not the case. Uh, just two or three or four years back. And since we are 80% of the domestic market, this means more than half the three-wheelers being sold in India today as an industry are CNG. Now, I don't know what it is for cars and buses, but, you know, with all the uh, communication I see from OEMs like Maruti and Tata in recent months, mm -hmm. I get the sense that CNG is becoming really popular there as well. Um, and I would also share one more insight with you that somebody very senior in government pointed out to me that they believe that one of the reasons why E3-wheelers are not more popular than they uh, are currently is because the CNG three-wheeler is very, very competitive. Mm. So I would actually uh, really uh, plug for a strong push on CNG because the government is anyway mm. doing a great job of rapidly expanding the CNG network. Mm. And if I may say so, I uh, placed this before the FM and her team uh, during the pre-budget discussion uh, for the previous budget, that if CNG uh, GST could be brought to something like uh, 18%, let's say, mm. you know, for petrol, diesel, it's 28%, for EVs, it's 5%. Mm. If it could be brought to something like 18%, uh, that would really help because the CNG system cost, you know, as a percentage of a car cost may be very small, but as a percentage of a motorcycle's cost or a scooter's cost is, is very large. Uh, so uh, the very inspiring idea that was sparked in my mind after what Mr. Gadkari said was this, that, you know, why aren't there any CNG scooters and motorcycles? You know, uh, it would be great for consumers because it would cut their running costs by half. So it's like petrol becoming effectively 55 rupees a liter. There would be no concerns about safety, charging range, uh, battery life, etc. Great for the manufacturer uh, and great for the government because you make 18% GST. So, so I would say that uh, we talked in the beginning uh, about some disruptive action um, uh, to get the entry-level consumer going again. I think this would really galvanize them if uh, uh, you know the government would consider some concession on CNG in terms of GST mm -hmm. and if OEMs would develop. Uh, CNG scooters and motorcycles, uh, I think India can show uh, a great example uh, to the rest of the world once again. So, uh, is there a CNG bike or on the cards, uh, Mr. Bajaj? Uh, I can tell you this, there is no CNG scooter <laughs> on the cards. Uh, we are focused just in the niche area of the uh, EV scooter. Uh, but of course, um, as a motorcycle maker, uh, we are always looking at all such technologies. That's the diplomatic answer I must give you at this time. In the 125cc and above space, as I said, we are already doing well. We hope to do better with all the initiatives we discussed. But the 100cc has been very elusive. And uh, who knows, maybe a uh, CNG Bajaj motorcycle that halves people's running costs uh, would be the answer uh, with a little help uh, from the government. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Bajaj, for joining us, giving us an outlook on alternate fuels. You give us a hint that uh, there could be a CNG bike in the 100cc segment coming in from Bajaj Auto, the EV ramp-up plans as well. Thanks once again for being with us here on CNBC TV18. Thank you, Parikshit. Felt like a board meeting. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that was a very exhaustive interview that came through from Rajiv Pajaj. I think the big takeaway for me was that the mid-market segment is seeing very strong growth. Currently, Bajaj Auto has 30% uh, market share in the mid-market segment, which is the 125cc to 200cc segment. And they're hoping, they're vying for number one position there. They're ramping up their capacities, launching a whole uh, host of pulsers, the largest ever pulser as well. So lots of action happening in that space, although the entry-level segment continues to be under pressure. But let's slip into a short break. On the other side, the other big space that's buzzing this afternoon is PSU Banks. We'll tell you more about that in a bit.